camera stand, it's a B160 size 10 thread, and tie the, use the uni thread 80 and olive. You start the thread at the, the, eye, the, the hook, and the way down I'm going to tie in some gold oval tinsel. Let's catch that in. It's on my side. And then work my way down and come round the bend slightly just to form the small tag which is a, a mix of a flame seals fur and a sunburst in this case. Normally I'd use a red, this is a nice blend and it works really well. You don't need a lot and then just basically it is part of the body but uh, it is class as the tag. Then looking for a an olive seal sphere. Just onto the body. Now you can use many subs out there. Angora. Uh, SLF is the synthetic version. Uh, good subs, so it's up to yourself. And there's your body. Now the body hackle normally in the green peter would be a furnace, a well-marked furnace. Now I'm using a grizzle dyed olive. Gonna bear some of the stem. It's a cock grizzle. Uh, this is for my saddle. Do I turn it at the top and then work my way down? Now get in line with the tag, but before you do that, just stop there, just stop at that point. Do I turn with the, the rib and then catch it so that you're not covering up too much of the tag? So you're about three, four turns down. Tag or keep the rib tight, bring fibres, it's any cock fibres going towards the eye, draw them back and then bring up the half turn, tidy up, and then trim over here. And that's your body now, we tied up this area. can bring some of the, the fur out with a velcro, but it's up to yourself. The wing, I'm going to tie a double wing on. Uh, what I've got here, got a dyed golden olive. This is a hen pheasant quill, and there's a the natural. I'm going to use both. The under wing is going to be the, the golden olive, so I need a right and a left slip. So one for the left side, one for the right side. Gonna line up the ends. Once you're happy, then you basically sit them on and come on the top. Use it like fold them over like a roof type shape. It is a sedge style wing, so you want it by by the bend. Now you see how it's not sitting the way you would like. Now that's not a disaster, I mean what I do is just mark it with a turn or so, and then take it off, and then back on, because at times it actually sits better the second time. And then, pinch and loop, tie them on, just a wee quick look. It's, the wing length is, may look a wee bit long, but once it's, once it's all together it's fine. It's a short hook as well, but it just suits this style, that's the way I like it. You can shorten the wing if you don't like the longer wing, but again, now we're going on to the, the natural hen pheasant. And again, we need a right and a left. Doubling up on the wing. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. Just use the natural itself, or the dyed. Again, I'm lining up the tips. And then fold them down either side of the wing. It's a good support when you tie these wings in. This, when you're putting the second on, it's usually easier. And you want them to sh basically kind of separate a wee bit. The wall wouldn't have been fished anyway, so just check. This one's dropped a wee bit on this side, so what you do is just go back. Just lift it. Come back in two or three turns again. Position the wing the way you want. 
Check the land again as well. I think it's just a wee touch long, so I'm going to take it forward. If you're not happy, always, always go back. Check it out. Look at your side. You want this kind of doubled tight wing. So you do it. It just works. Once that's been fished, it, it blends really well. Now that's a better length, uh, I feel. So I can trim this away. And wax my thread. Make sure this is secure. Tied in really well. Get position there. Yeah. Now, a couple of horns. Which is optional, which I, I like the horns. Just adds a wee bit to the fly. These are dyed olive flank feather, mallard flank. Just take two out, line up the ends, tear them away. Now these do, these really do show up in the water, so don't we? Well, I'd put them on. They certainly look. I mean, dyed yellow as well is a good colour. That. I'm going to get a wee highlight in, it's going to use now on the, the original I used a split jungle cock eye just to show you don't need jungle cock to do it, I'm using dyed goose by it now the same colour, nice orange, nice warm orange I'm just going to use the tips so it's just a wee highlight you could use green olive chartreuse and like that I'll go with the fly Set the way you want. Now what I'm going to do is take the thread all the way down, nice and tight. You can break them off. It's much easier to do that. Come back up. Now I'm going to use some dyed olive. This is roe deer, which I've dyed a nice olive. Now I'm going to form the head with it. Tie in a kind of collar first. The deer hair, just as a, a deer hair hackle, if you want to call it. Length, around about half the length of the wing, slightly longer than the fibres in the, the body hackle. Come around with a couple of loose turns and allow the deer hair to spin itself round the shank. Two or three turns through. Go back these ends. Just hold them back. Ready for the deer hair in front. Now you need the the hollow deer hair, the, the stuff at the bottom. And the hollow, the good stuff. And then that goes on first. Now this, I could do the exact same way. There's a couple of ways you could put deer hair on. Now obviously you've seen the first one with a sitting top and then allow it to, the thread to roll it. Or you can just basically put the eye of the hook into the middle of the bunch of deer here that you have. Come round, a couple of, again, loose turns and tighten up. And then run it through, keeping a hold of the cut ends to the eye. Always keeping the thread nice and tight. Now, what gives me the confidence to use an 8 thread is that the thread's waxed. Always gives you a feel for the, the thread. It's, it makes it stronger. It conditions the thread a bit better. To me, it gives me a lot of confidence when I'm, when I'm dying with it. Again, just make sure it's nice and tight, the foot finish. I'm using my nail so that I'm not pulling the hook off the, the vise, because you can do that. Turn away the thread. And then we can come in and trim away the deer hair to form the head. Great, here's the angle. I'm using a curved pair of scissors here. And basically resting it on the eye. The, the hook. Start off quite short and then we'll turn, if you can, turn the, your vice like this. Makes the job easier. Get the shape you want. Bring out the cut ends.
You will be able to find it. I mean, the cut ends with longer, it's much easier to actually grab them. Just, you can push the scissors into the cut ends, which will basically stop you cutting away your collar. Hold the collar down like I did there. And there we go, that's your green Peter Murla. The deer here you can go round and round trimming all day. The quicker you do it the better sounds. You'll always find a fibre that you don't like. You've got to train yourself to stop. Now if you want to reduce the collar a wee bit, or not the collar, the, the deer here, you can hold down the wing and the fibres and trim. I usually do this away from the vice but you'll not see me doing it. So keep it on the vice so you can come round, reduce the length, reduce the size of the head. Just take your time and be careful as I say. And there we go. Bit of nice into the head. Just don't be shy, put it in, get it in there, right in there to use the brush to get into the foot finish. You will fill the eye up, so all you have to do is then, using a double needle or whatever, just clean it out before it dries. And there we go. And that's again Peter Mudler.